guys it's Megan Lorson and I'm back with another video today so today I thought I'd do a little vlog for you guys about my day um, this is my third day being back in the salon since we have reopened so I wanted to kind of take you through a little bit of what it's looking like now today is a Monday and I don't normally take clients on Mondays but due to the being out of the salon I am actually gonna take one client today and then I have a consultation for a color correction that I'm gonna be doing so I'm gonna show you guys that I'm gonna take you through the salon show you like some different things we've implemented and what it looks like during the day now um, but I just got my nails done I'm so excited it's been so long so I'm feeling a little normal today and I'm actually headed to my favorite local coffee shop the whole bean they just opened today also so I'm feeling a little normal today, you know, got a little pep in my step. It's just, it's a great day in the neighborhood, you know, what can I say? Got my nails done, get my coffee, and then right, after, and then right after that, I'm gonna head straight to the salon. So I'm gonna give you guys a little run through of the salon and show you different things that we've kind of gotten set up and um, what's different now. So let's go. Just got to the whole bean. You guys have no idea how excited my coffee shop's back open. Now we back in business, y'all. Got back in my car, head to the salon. You guys, look at this salad. Oh my gosh. Literally, she makes the best apple walnut salad. So good. And then of course, I got my huge iced coffee, which is literally half coffee, half almond milk. And then she puts one pump of coconut in there and then tops it with a whip and oh, so good. All right, let's go to the salon. Okay, I just got to the salon. So right when you, before you walk in, we have these two signs posted. So the first one is face masks are required. And then we also have this one stating that if you've been in contact with anybody or have any symptoms of the COVID-19, um, you're not permitted to come in and you will have to reschedule. So those are the two signs we have posted right there. And then right when you walk in the door, we have this sign. So they come straight here and they have to sanitize their hands. And then after that, they go straight to sit in their stylist chair. And then after each person gets done with their hair, we completely sanitize everything. So we, all of our tools and implements go straight into the barber side over there and they soak for at least 10 minutes. And then everything else gets sprayed down or wiped down with Lysol wipes or Clorox wipes. The chair gets completely wiped down. And then what we do is we take our dirty laundry, like the cape and the towel, and bring it straight all the way to that back door right there. That is our break room slash laundry room. So it goes straight back there. We put it straight into the washer or there's a bin that it goes in if the washer is already full and then we just dump the bin in there. That way it's less touching. Also, we have Lysol wipes and Clorox wipes scattered all throughout the salon. Uh, we got some over there. Then we have this cool care for our clippers and things to spray on to disinfect those. And of course, all of our clipper guards go into the barber side. Barber side. Then we have hand sanitizers on each station to use after each client, before each client. And then right in here is our wash house. And right before you come in, there's this sign on the door that says, please no talking in the wash house. And then we also have Clorox wipes and hand sanitizer right here as well on top of our towel warmer. So each sink basin and chair gets wiped down after each guest gets done getting their hair washed. So there's that. And then all the way in the back here, we also have more Lysol wipes. So this coffee station periodically gets wiped down and then also at least every hour we wipe down all the doorknobs for the bathroom, the wash house. And then after each person walks in the front door, the door gets wiped down right after they someone walks in and right after someone walks out. And then we originally had coffee cups sitting right here, but we completely got rid of those because we just want less things to touch in the salon. So we changed them to disposable coffee cups. So everybody gets a disposable coffee cup and then we still are offering drinks. And then we got rid of all of our magazines. We had magazines back here and we had some all the way up there in the waiting area, but we completely got rid of those. 
So as you can tell, everything's really clean. We don't have a lot of things to touch. We don't have a ton of things um, just to minimize things that we need to disinfect and things like that. So that is that. And then also we have one more sign up here that I forgot to show you guys. And it is just saying that clients should not touch the retail and that the stylists will get their products for them. So we are eliminating as much touching as possible. So, oh, and we just got new blinds. Yay, so it lets more light in, so it's really nice. So those are all the signs and different things that we are doing right now. And then of course, we're all wearing face masks as well. And all of our clients are wearing face masks also. I have these cute little face masks up here, a local sewing place called Pearl's Thimble made all of these masks just in case we have clients that come in that forgot to bring a mask they can purchase one for four dollars and um so yeah it's a great way to help her out and helps us out and just that way we have them on hand so she made all these cute ones they're like there's so many okay so before my first um guest comes in i just wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how i'm doing my scheduling for my clients so Right now, I am only scheduling clients that have been pre-existing clients and ones that have come to me regularly. Um, those are my first priority. So I've already pretty much done that. I've gotten pretty much all those people rescheduled. So right now I'm about booked out for three weeks solid, um, but we just opened Friday. So there's still gonna be a lot more people calling in and a lot more people that I've done here and there randomly and just, uh, you know, those kind of people. So. It will get busier, um, but I have scheduled more of my faithful clients that I've been doing for a long time that come to me every four to six weeks or something like that. Um, but also I am scheduling clients where I'm doing multiple services. So I'm not scheduling just haircut services um, by themselves. If they're coming to me right now during these first three weeks, they are getting cut, color, highlights, like they're getting the whole nine yards. Um, they're getting Brazilian blowouts, the color, like everything, um, just because that's going to be the best use of my time, but also we've not been open for two months in business and I really think that those should be the priority. So that is what my schedule looks like. So it is nice because I am scheduling less people right now. So for example, we opened Friday, I had... It was either four or five clients all day. I worked from nine to five and had four or five clients, but each client literally, no joke, was a haircut, retouch with a mix of highlights. We did a toner, we did treatments. So each client was getting like everything. Also facial waxing. Um, so it was nice because I got to spend that one-on-one -on -one quality time with my customers that I haven't seen in a couple months um, and really pamper them, take my time with them but also it was less people to disinfect after because I was spending long periods of time with one person at a time. So that kind of cut down on the stress of boom, 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 client after client after client. Yes, these clients came in one after the other, um, but I was spending a long period of time doing all these different things for them. Same with Saturday. Saturday I had, I worked eight to two o'clock in the afternoon and I think I took four or five clients again. Um, and I had my assistant actually help me on Saturday. But same thing, they were all very large services, like cut, color, treatment, all of that. So that's been enjoyable for me. That seems to be like a good pace. Um, it, give me enough time, it gives me enough time to disinfect between each person. It lets me spend more time with that one person. Uh, and of course, they're super happy when they finish because they've got everything done. They got their highlights, their facial waxing, their treatment, their cut. So they're super happy about that. So that's how I've been doing my scheduling. And that's what seems to be working really good for me. Um, again, I've only been in the day salon two days now since reopening. So, so far, so good. We're just kind of taking it slow, easing it, easing back in to see where everybody's at. Um, but I also wanna throw this out here too, for those of you watching this that haven't reopened yet or you're getting ready to, um, I just wanna share my experience. So the first week, okay, Monday, you know, we found out we could open Friday. So that whole week leading up to our opening date, 
it was very stressful. I am a person that does not get stressed easily. Um, I just, I don't, I try to handle things and I try to just, you know, go with it. Um, I mean, yes, I get stressed, of course, that's just, but it was very stressful because of just preparing to open, what's this gonna look like, What are how are people gonna act coming in and just, all the guidelines that we had to follow and just making sure that we had all the guidelines and we were following everything. Um, so I wanna say to you guys, don't stress yourself out too much about that. It It's really gonna be okay. The way I think about it too is if you personally as a stylist feel like you are putting yourself or your family at risk going back to work, then you probably should not go back to work at this time because it's gonna be stressful for you, it's gonna be stressful for your clients, your other people working with you, whoever, it's gonna be stressful for everybody. So do yourself a favor, do everybody around you a favor, and I would say just wait to go back. Um, and on the flip side too, if your clients are concerned about coming in, then they shouldn't even come in. If they feel like they're putting themselves at risk, then they shouldn't even be coming in anyways. So that alone should take off a lot of pressure. Otherwise, the actual technicalities of the guidelines inside the salon are not that bad. It is simply wear a mask, your clients wear a mask. And basically what you're doing is just doing your absolute best to disinfect the surfaces that get touched, your implements, your tools. Um, that is the majority of it. Don't get so caught up in all the technicalities because I was kind of doing that because I was look I was in all these Facebook groups, hairstylist groups, you know, you hear stuff on the news. Then I had different people sending me this guideline and that guideline and this salon's doing this and that salon's doing that. And yes, every salon is doing something a little bit differently. Everybody lives in a different area. So your guidelines are gonna be a little different or your clientele is gonna be different. So then your guidelines might have to be different. So take that into consideration too and what one person is doing or what one salon is doing doesn't mean that it's the best for your salon or that that's what you have to do. Ultimately, we all want to stay safe. We all want to keep our clients and our customers safe. That is our top priority. And at the end of the day, if we are doing our very best to keep everything clean and disinfected and everybody safe and healthy, then that we're doing a good job. So keep that in mind. Don't get too stressed about it. We're all in the same boat and we're all gonna get through this together. So, on that note, I have my first client coming in in about, I don't know, like maybe 30 minutes, actually it's probably like 20 minutes now. Um, so she's just a consultation. She decided to box dye her hair during the quarantine. Um, she was pretty light before. She box dyed it black, um, and it has faded to a really muddy green color. So she showed me a picture of what she wants to do. She would like to go rose gold, which means she's gotta be really light. Um, and she wants to keep like a shadow root. So she wants to have like a shadow root fading into a really light rose gold on the ends. So today she's coming in just for a consultation. I'm gonna ask her what she's used on her hair. I'm gonna ask her the brand. I'm gonna ask her some questions about that and um, make sure she doesn't use anything else or if it was just like one time box dye. Um, and then I'm also gonna do a test strand on her to see what her hair is capable of doing and what it's going to do. So then when I find out about asking, after asking her some questions and I see what her hair is kind of capable of doing after doing a test strand, then we're gonna talk about setting up an appointment um, because she's gonna be a little bit of a project and I told her that so. I'm gonna see about how much time I think I need for her. So I'm gonna take you guys through our consultation and show you her hair and show you guys the test strands so you guys can all see what it does. I have no idea what it's gonna do. Like I said, she sent me pictures and in the pictures it was like a greenish color. So we're gonna see what it does today. So I'll show you guys that. And then after that, I have one more client for the day and she is a blonde. She's been coming to me for a while and we are gonna be touching up her roots. So we're gonna do like a highlight touch up. We're gonna tone her. Um, I, we might be doing a trim or a haircut. We'll see what her hair looks like. So I'll show you guys that. And then I'll just show you guys my routine of what I do before and after to clean. And of course I will put my face mask on soon. I just finished eating. So 
gonna put my face mask on and then show you guys those. So let me get this scrunchie on. Go so tell me what you use on the hair. So I used the Arctic Fox black hair dye, the Transylvania color, and okay. I just in February. Okay. And I had re dyed it a couple times even during quarantine. I was like, why re dye it? Because nobody's going to see me. It's just a waste of hair dye. So you first did this back in February? Mm -hmm. Around like Valentine's Day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you did the black in February. Mm -hmm. And then did you do anything else after that? Like any other box dye on top of it? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't box dye. It was like normal dye, like squeeze dye. Okay. So you didn't mix it with anything? Mm -mm. Okay. And it was, you said it was Arctic Fox? Yes. Okay. All right. So you put that on and then it faded green? Mm -hmm. So it faded? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so I kept like, I re, I redid it like every two, three weeks, two and a half weeks around there. Okay. Um, but then since, since quarantine, I just haven't really touched but it. But since then you haven't done it. Okay. How many times would you say you've done it? Probably like three or four. Three or four. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You haven't done it since. All right. So basically what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna take like a random strand underneath the bottom that way you won't really be able to see it. Okay. Um, and I just wanna see what your hair is gonna do for us because this will save us a lot of time and kind of let me know what your hair is gonna be mm -hmm. capable of doing and if we need to maybe change your goal up a little bit at first because mm -hmm. I know the picture you sent me, your goal is to keep your roots kind of like a little bit of a shadow root mm -hmm. that fades into like a really pretty mm -hmm. light rose gold. Um, so that's definitely the goal. If it's and unattainable, it's unattainable. But yeah, and that's what we'll goal. find yeah. out today. Yeah, we'll find out today very quickly what your hair is gonna be capable of doing okay. for now. And then we'll go from there and like see what our options are. So let me go mix up a little bit over here and we'll just do a test strand. It won't cross us that long, but it'll just tell me a lot okay. just by what it's doing by watching it. So we'll do that. I'm gonna just show you guys a close up of what her hair looks like right now. So she was just telling me in the consultation that she used Arctic Fox Transylvania was the color, which is a black color. So she did it a couple times on her hair and then it faded into this. So it's really interesting that it faded green like this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a section underneath her hair and we're gonna do a test strand. So I'm gonna use Paul Mitchell Synchro Lift with 20 volume on her hair and we're just gonna do a test strand and see what it does. And I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so this has been processing for about 10 minutes and it is looking beautiful. It's doing exactly what I want it to do. I wasn't sure if it was even gonna budge or what it was gonna do. You just never know with color corrections, but it's doing really good. And this was just 20 volume and synchro lift. So we're gonna wipe this off and we already got her color correction scheduled for next week. So stay tuned for that. I'm gonna do a whole nother video on her color correction, showing you guys the before the after and all the in-betweens. Okay, so I looked up Arctic Fox hair color because um, I wasn't super familiar with it, I've never used it before, and it is a semi-permanent hair color. So that helped our case tremendous, tremendously. So it wasn't exactly box dye. So I was really surprised to see that her hair lifted um, I wasn't sure what was going on. She told me box dye over the, over our messages. So um, yeah, Arctic Fox is a semi-permanent. So that plays a huge factor into it. It's not as bad as like permanent box dye uh, hair color. So, and then as you guys can see in the test strand, it actually came up really good. That was 20 volume with Paul Mitchell Synchro Lift on there for like 10 minutes. So it wasn't even on there that long and it was coming up beautifully. So she's coming back next Wednesday and she wants to get a little bit brighter than that. She said she really likes the idea of doing like a balayage. So I think we're gonna kind of stay away from doing the rose gold 
on her all over um, just because maintenance is going to be a little bit more on that and then it's it's going to fade a little bit quicker than like a normal natural color would. So she ended up telling me that she would rather do a balayage. So we're going to do a balayage. We're going to keep her natural color, bring some of that down through the end. We're going to eliminate that green and then we're going to do a foliage and um, really brighten up a lot of those pieces to give her a nice bright look. So I'm excited about that. That'll be next Wednesday and I'm going to record the whole process. So that'll be like a whole separate video, but I've got like 15 more minutes and my next one is coming in and we are going to be doing a highlight retouch on her, toning her. She's a beautiful blonde. So we'll, I'll show you that when she gets here. Got Tara in my chair now and we are getting ready to do highlights. We just gave her a pretty decent cut. We cut at least three inches off her hair. Gave her a cute little cut with some long layers and left it a little bit longer in the front so it just kind of like angles around her face. But it has been quite a few months since we've retouched her hair. So she's got quite a bit of regrowth. So we're gonna work on touching up her highlights and brightening her roots back up. And I'm gonna be using Paul Mitchell Synchro Lift with 30 volume on her roots today to brighten them up. Okay, so my Last client just left Tara and I totally forgot to get a video of her after we were talking and totally just forgot about that. So anyways, it turned out really good. What I did was a partial foil on her. Um, so I started back like right underneath her crown area and I did literally baby lights for her whole entire head. So I did baby lights in horizontal sections in the back of the head. And then I started working up on the sides and did horizontal sections all the way to the top and just literally did baby lights everywhere and let her process. And then I ended up toning her with Paul Mitchell, the Demi 10 V, which is 10 violet. And it turned out really beautiful. It's nice and bright, no more roots. Um, so she was really happy with it. So that concludes my vlog for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. If you guys have any questions about anything in this video or what it's like being back in the salon. I just thought this video would be helpful and help you guys to see a little bit of what it looks like in our salon over here in Virginia. So thank you guys for watching and if you're not subscribed already make sure you subscribe because I post new videos every single week on hair videos, in salon, um, foiling tutorial, I mean you name it, social media, lifestyle content. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos and thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.